All right, well, uh, we'll get started here. Uh, again, my name is, uh, is Mr. Chen. And my email address is mileschen at gmail.com. And then um, just, uh, just so to help me um, keep track of everything, um, just put, uh, when you email me some, somewhere in there, put uh, Wednesday statistics in the, uh, uh, in the subject line, just so I know uh, who, I'm, who I'm dealing with and stuff like that. Okay. Um, so yes, I will. Uh, I'm taking over the uh, the class from uh, Dr. Gamsari, and uh, uh, my instructions were, you know, here's the syllabus. Try to uh, try to do what you can, and um, so you know, maybe he said there were, he was going to cancel the third test, but then I never got instructions on what's going to happen to the grading policy after that. So. Uh, I think I'll keep the third test. I'll, I'll write a test based on the stuff I cover, and, uh, and and I'll keep the third test. And then and I think that will also serve as a good um, maybe review for the final exam uh, as well. Okay. Um, at this point, uh, I've received very uh, very little information about the class, so I don't know anyone's grades or anything like that. Uh, I was just also given the uh, the stack of tests. To uh, to take over and so um, you know I took a I took a look at the test this morning I took it myself just just to uh, see but yeah uh, you know there were a few few typos and stuff and uh, uh, and uh, so I'll, I'll I'll get those graded and um, and we'll see and I'll, I'll wait for grades and, uh, and things like that so so at this point I probably can't answer any questions about your grades or where you stand in the class um, I'll I'll have a better idea. Um, and uh, and so uh, my my teaching method is a little bit old school. All right, I uh, I write on the blackboard and uh, and talk and explain as I go along, and then um, then we'll go there. Uh, but I do um, I do record the uh, the lectures uh, and I post them uh, on YouTube so you can watch those because uh, I know three hours is a long time for. Uh, material absorption, so um, so you can you can watch them uh, at your own pace. There, um, I also I tried to send out an email through the Blackboard. Did you guys get that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, if you did not get an email from me, check your spam folder or something. Um, you should have gotten it. Uh, I included a link to uh, the class webpage that I use for my other class. Okay. So I've made some resources available. Uh, for the other class, but uh, now available to you guys, which are um, uh, for the homework problems that I've assigned to them. Uh, I've worked through uh, all of the solutions, um, a lot of them in video form, uh, explaining uh, as I go through them. Okay. Now, I I recognize that the uh, the homework problems that I've assigned to them don't match the homework problems that Dr. Gamsari assigned to you guys. Um, so. Uh, but because I'll be collecting the homework and I'll be grading it, okay, I'll give you the option to do either the problems that Dr. Gamsari assigned or the problems that uh, that I assigned to um, to my other class. Okay, so uh, so next week you guys are turning in homework assignment four, which includes chapter six and chapter seven. Okay, so uh, maybe some of you guys already did chapter six, uh, the problems that Dr. Gamsari assigned. So if you want to turn those in, that's fine. If you want to turn in chapter seven, which uh, he assigned, that's also fine. If you want to mix up, do chapter six, which he assigned, and then uh, look at the homework assignment that I gave to uh, my class, which would, the chapter seven homework, I think is called homework six. Um, if you look at that and you want to do those problems instead, that's fine, okay? And homework is, um, in my mind, it's, it's for your, Benefit, okay. I get no pleasure out of going through stacks of homework and, and seeing if you guys did it, all right. So it's for your benefit. So, um, you know, and probably the more problems you do, the more you're going to learn from your homework, okay. So, uh, so it's it's for you guys. So, you know, if you want to do different problems and mix it up, just show me that you've done some problems, and I'll, I'll give you credit for the homework there, okay. Um, and that. Maybe that will help ease the the transition, okay? Because 
probably my teaching style is going to be a little bit different. And so, um, you know, I, I know it's these these types of situations aren't always uh, aren't aren't always the greatest, but uh, but but we'll do what we can. Okay, and then um, and uh, and so if I if I pace pace correctly, I think we can get up through chapter nine in the book. And so uh, you'll have test three, which will be like going up to chapter nine, and then uh, we'll have the uh, the final exam uh, on June nineteenth, and uh, and we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that um, as as those days approach. Okay. Are there uh, are there any questions uh, just right off the bat about stuff? Yeah. So your art test, are your <coughs> test is going to be on seven, eight, and nine. Yes, chapter. Uh, so the test three will be on chapter seven, eight, and nine. So, you know, I know he said he might have told you guys that he's going to cancel it, but but just because I don't know what's going to happen to the grades if, if you remove a test, we'll, we'll keep it there, okay? And and I will write a test that covers chapter seven, eight, and nine, and uh, and, and we'll use that. Okay. Yes. Will we have access to your Blackboard? So it's not a blackboard, it's just a World Wide Web thing, so everybody in the world connected to the internet has access but to it. But to get the homework assignment that you assign. Yeah, yeah, okay. So the, uh, the class website, it's, uh, it's also in the, uh, the email link, okay? Classes.smiles.chen, okay? Who doesn't like smiles, all right? Um, <laughs> dot com, all right? And then... Um, and then I teach uh, two other classes, okay? One's XL10 and one's XL13. Uh, make sure you go to the XL10 class, okay? XL13 is a more advanced introductory statistics class. So. In case that's your thing, all right? But it uses a different textbook, so it's not gonna, not gonna be relevant to you guys. All right. Um, is that good? Okay, and uh, so I just wanna make sure everyone's, uh, because today we're going to go into uh, chapter seven, so just want to make sure everyone's comfortable with the uh, the normal distribution. Uh, otherwise, we'll have some problems. But normal distribution is good with everyone, right? You guys all know how to get z scores and use the z table. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, so let's talk about that. Okay. This word is uh, it's really tall. So this is all about uh, what we call sampling distributions. So let's uh, let's just imagine a scenario here. Okay, let's say I've got. store and uh, and some crazy idea comes to me and I said I'm I'm absolutely in love with M&Ms okay so I buy myself you know 20 jumbo sized bags and then I buy a bucket or a small bathtub and I dump all of the M&Ms in here okay so I've got a giant vat of M&Ms Now, let's say um, the, uh, the Mars, the M&M company, Mars, Milky Way, whatever, they, uh, let's say they tell me that exactly 18% uh, of their M&Ms are blue, okay? So, uh, so in, in this giant vat, 18% of the M&Ms are blue. Now, uh, let's say I mix this up, and I reach in there, and I grab grab a handful of M&Ms. Okay, and so let's say let's say in my hand I can hold. Uh, okay, so more than a handful. Let's say uh, let's say I take a scoop and I pull out. Uh, 70 M&Ms, okay? So I scoop out, okay, 70 M&Ms. How, 
many blue M&Ms do you think I'll have in there? to have no blue m &Ms, okay? Or if I, if I mix it up and I scoop it up, it, I could have a whole bunch of blue m &Ms, all right? But if we were playing some kind of, if we were putting odds, playing odds, okay? That's like, we want to gamble on everything, okay? Probably, uh, you would want to uh, put your money on something like 13 blue m &Ms or 12 blue m &Ms. Those seem a lot more likely. Why, why are those more likely? Why did you guys tell me 12 or 13 blue M&Ms? Yeah, okay, so so we do uh, 70 times 0.18, right? And then you get 12.6 on your calculator, okay? So we do 70 times 12, uh, times 0.18, and we got 12.6, all right? So we know we can't, we're not gonna get 12.6 blue M&Ms, we either have 12 blue M&Ms, or we've got 13 blue M&Ms, but this gives us an idea of about how many blue M&Ms we expect to find. So, so 12 and 13 are probably going to be the most likely numbers. Is it possible that I get 14 blue M&Ms? Yes. Sure, no problem, right? 15 blue M&Ms? That's also possible. What about 30 blue M&Ms? Oh. Yes. It is possible, but it's unlikely. It's unlikely. Okay. So, so it. Just here, we've been talking about this, and we might see 12 blue M&Ms, 13 blue M&Ms, 14 or 15, maybe even 30, okay? And certainly we can also see 11 or 10 blue M&Ms, maybe only eight or seven, that's, that's possible too. But some numbers are more likely than others. So this also gives us the idea of a probability distribution, okay? We can talk about the probabilities of some, some numbers showing up. Okay, so we got it. We got. So we're saying, okay, 12 M and M's, 12 blue M and M's is 12 blue or 13 blue. Ah. See, most likely. Okay, and then sure, 14 or 15 are certainly possible. Or 10 and 11. Okay. And then let's say I dump those back in and I mix it up and I pull out another scoop of M&Ms. How many blue M&Ms are in this one? Probably it may or may not be exactly the same as this one. All right. So maybe I saw 12 blue M&Ms in this first scoop. I dump them back and I mix it up and I pull out another 70 M&Ms. How many blue M&Ms this time? Maybe 12, maybe 13. We might get a different number, right? Because every time we go into the, the vat of M&Ms, the giant bucket, and I mix it up and pull out another scoop, the, uh, the M&Ms that I observe, this is, this is what we call a random sample, okay? Each scoop of M&Ms is a random sample taken from the giant vat. Taken from, we'll just say the, uh, yeah, the back, a random sample. Of 70 M&Ms. And so let's say I kept track. Let's say this was a, uh, I was overcome with a fascination with M&Ms, all right? And 
And so uh, I started keeping track. And I said, all right, this is, uh, you know, captain's log, scoop number one. I counted uh, 70 M&Ms, okay, scoop of 70 M&Ms. Uh, 12 blue. Uh, and then uh, I go, wow, that was exciting. All right, and I dump it back in and I mix it up. And I take out another 70 M&Ms, okay? So this is scoop two. All right, so how many, how many M&Ms might I see in this one? Okay, 14. 14 blue. All right, we put that, we put that back. And we do a scoop three. And I do 70 M&Ms again. And then how many blue are in this one? 11. Okay, so, so I'm keeping track of this. And let's say I do this, I don't know, 10,000 times. This is, this is my life, guys. All right, um, and uh, and let's say I want to figure out the proportion that were blue. So I would do 12 divided by 70, and what's my proportion blue? Here I got about 0 0.171, and then I do 14 divided by 70, and I get 0 0.2, and then I do 11 divided by 70, and I get 0.157, and I do this for all 10,000 different scoops of 70 M&Ms. Right. Is this a picture making sense to you guys? OK, so let's say I look at this column. What is this column representing? Proportion. The proportion of? It's the proportion of blue M&Ms in my sample, OK? Or I'm going to call this the sample proportion. Is that a new term to you guys, or have we heard this? Heard it. Heard it, good. Sample proportion. And uh, does anyone know what symbol we use to signify the sample proportion? P hat. P hat. P hat. Great. That's good with, good with everyone. So, I, so now I've generated a column of P hats. If I've done 10,000 scoops, I've got 10,000 different p hat values. All right, let's say I make, let's say I take all of these. These are now, this is a numeric variables, right? And I can make a, what kind of uh, graphic display can we use for numeric data? A histogram. We can make a histogram with this. Or a box plot or whatever else you want to make, OK? So let's say I make a histogram. What is this histogram going to look like? For a very big sample, it should kind of look normal. Uh, it's not going to be any variation. It's going to be a flat line across. Flat line across. Okay. Well, kind of. All right. Well, let's think. OK. What's the uh, what's the smallest possible value I can see? Zero. Zero, right? And then what's the largest possible value that I could possibly see? Seventy. Not seventy. One. One, because we're talking about a proportion. A proportion. Okay. All right. Now, probably even after ten thousand scoops. I will probably never get a proportion of one. That means in my I scooped out 70 M&Ms and it was like gold. I mean all blue M&Ms, right? That's probably never going to happen, right? Even if I, I can stir all day, and I'll probably never get a scoop of 70 M&Ms where all 70 were blue. I'd have a heart attack if that happened. No, I wouldn't. I would just I'd say something. Something happened, right? Someone's messing with me. Okay. But what do you think the, uh, and the most common number we'll see is going to be what? 0 0.171 to 0 0.1. Okay, okay. So, so if I were to display this and put a center, the center, where, where would the center be? Okay, so I said, I told us that 18% of the M&Ms are blue. So my center is going to be at 18, okay? And 
I'm going to have centered at 18, I'm going to have a normal, something that looks like a normal distribution. Okay. So proportions that are close to 18, and I'll never actually see 18% blue M&Ms, because 18%, for me to get 18%, I have to get 12.6 blue M&Ms. I'm never actually going to see that. But maybe I'll get 12 blue, or I'm going to get 13 blue. And so that will give me you know, something very close to 18. And then um, other, other values like 14 blue M&Ms or 11 blue M&Ms, those will also appear, but are less frequent. And so here, this is a distribution the um, p hats that um, I might observe. Okay. And the histogram indicates that 18%, something around 18% is going to be the most common value, and things around 18% will be more common, but then the further away I get from 18%, the less common I will see those proportions. And that's what we've got. How does that feel? Just, just not if you're with me. Okay, all right. Now, if we're talking about a normal distribution, there are two pieces of information we need in order to do any kind, deal with any kind of no normal distribution. Do you, do you guys know what they are? Yeah. The two parameters, what are they? The mean, the, the mean and the standard deviation, okay? You've got one of them, which one do you have? You have the mean. The mean is 18%. So we've got a normal distribution. And the mean is 0.18. And what's my standard deviation? Oh, this is a tougher question, OK? The standard deviation is going to be the square root of 0.18 times 1 minus 0.18 divided by 70, naturally. So we'll uh, let's uh, so this is where we put up formulas here, okay? So my standard deviation, let's uh, let's punch this into our calculator. 0.18 times one minus 0.18 divided by 70, square root of that. I'm getting 0 0.0459. So this is a good time if you got your own calculator. See if you can. Just make sure that you can do this calculation on your calculator and get 0.0459. All right. So. And then for future tests, don't forget your calculators. All right, you're going to get in trouble. You guys are lucky that your classmates had uh, had spares. Okay, so 0.18 times the quantity 1 minus 0.18 divided by 70 inside the square root. So you, uh, on your calculator, if you've got a scientific one, if you've got just a four function calculator, it's going to be a pain in the butt. But if you've got a scientific calculator, you can just do 0.18 times parentheses 1 minus 0.18, close parentheses, divided by 70, hit the equal sign. And then uh, depending on how your calculator works, you might hit the square root button, you might have to do second square root. And then if you've got an answer key, what the answer key does is whatever number you got in the previous step, it's going to plug it in and give you the, the result there. Okay, so, so this calculation is going to give you whatever this whole thing is, and then you hit square root the answer, and it's going to take that number and spit it up. And we should all get 0 0.0459. Anyway, so what's what we're going to use for mean? The mean is mu, okay? The mean is always mu. Mu happens to be also P, but the symbol for the mean is mu. Okay. Are we good? We're all getting point zero four five nine. All right, all right. Keep those heads nodding. All right. Okay, so, uh, so that's our standard deviation. So this is, this is a sampling distribution for a proportion, okay?
And what a sampling distribution for proportion is, again, it's the idea that you've got a population. In our M&M &M example, the, the VACT of M&Ms was our population. So we have a population, and there is a certain proportion in that population. So in our population, in our example, 18% were blue M&Ms, okay? But maybe we're not dealing with M&Ms, maybe we're dealing with people, okay? So if we look at the entire United States, uh, I don't know, maybe, uh, Maybe 51% uh, are male, okay? Or maybe, uh, you know, if we knew the proportions of certain ethnicities, we could say something about that. Or maybe 20% uh, are over the age of 60. I have no idea, okay? So across the United States, there's, there's a population, and within that population, there's a certain proportion that has a trait, okay? So, or proportion. So that is. There is a population, okay. a certain proportion P, as a trait. What the sampling distribution is, is that if we randomly select a sample from the population, and we observe the proportion in our sample. So not, we're not dealing with the population anymore. So now we've taken a scoop of 70 M&Ms, or now we've taken a random sample of 100 people, and I count how many people in this sample um, are, over, uh, are over the age of 65 or something, then, then we get the sample proportion, the sample proportion. Or how, how many M&Ms in this handful are blue, we get the sample proportion. The sampling distribution is, if we do that over and over and over and over again, what is the distribution of all those P hats? What is the distribution of all those P hats? Take, take a random sample of size n. distribution is the probability distribution of all the p hats. So then, the next part is, if certain conditions are met, and we'll, we'll talk about these conditions. <coughs> then the sampling distribution of p hat follows a normal distribution. distributions have a mean and standard deviation. So, the mean mean mu is equal to p. And what is p? <coughs> Not a probability in this case. Well, I mean, think of it as a probability, but what is p? Proportion of the whole It's the proportion 
proportion in our population. It's the proportion in our population. Okay, so P is the proportion in our population. And the standard deviation, S, is equal to the square root of P times 1 minus P divided by N. What's N? The standard. Not the number of trials. The size of our sample. The size of our sample. How many, how many M&Ms are in each scoop? 70. Okay. How many people am I selecting in my sample? Whatever, 150. Something. Okay. N is the size of the sample. So, so um, if that's not automatic, write, write it down in your notes that P is the proportion in our population and N is our sample size. So then let's try a problem. Let's try an example problem. Okay, so we'll say in, uh, in the USA, um, 20% of people percent of people um, okay, like to dance. Who doesn't like to dance? Okay. Well, apparently 80% don't <laughs> in my example. So in the USA, we'll say 20% of people like to dance. We'll say like to dance more than something else. Okay. If I randomly select First of all, does this question make sense? Sort of. Sort of. Okay, so we got a sort of here. What, what part makes sense and what part sort of doesn't make sense? So you're saying it's of people like to dance. Okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to randomly select 80 Americans. Now when I randomly select these 80 people, I have no idea who I'm going to select. Okay? Maybe I get a bunch of people who like to dance. Maybe I don't. Okay? So it's possible that 20% like to dance. It's possible that more than 20% like to dance. It's possible that less than 20% likes to dance. Okay? Are, are we good so far? Right, so 80 is your sample. So 80 is my sample. And I'm asking, if I select 80 people, and I count up how many people like to dance, what's the probability that 25% of, of that 80 like to dance? 25% or, or more, okay? I should say that, uh, yeah, over 25%, yeah. So basically that 25% or more like to dance when I select a sample of 80, okay? So believe it or not, you have all the tools you need to answer this question, okay? So go ahead and try it out. And if you're totally stuck, we'll, we'll, we'll work through it. But, but try it out. And, and this is a, uh, you know, do your best. I think there's a lot of good learning that happens in your brain when you try it out. Okay? Some, uh, 
some people came back, and uh, and if you lent people uh, reference tables during the test and you want them back, um, just raise your hand. I'll bring it back to you. Uh, there, there's more pieces than this, but uh, based on the knowledge that you have prior to this class and what I've just provided you here, you have everything you need to solve the problem, okay? Now, it requires putting the pieces together, and, and that's a challenge. Okay, but try it out. Try it out and see, see how far you get. You guys are breaking my heart. You guys are breaking my heart here. Okay. <laughs> so this is uh, so really um, when we got when we uh, do a problem like this, I, I really got want you guys to try. Okay. And then some of you guys, I know you just wrote something and then decided to stare stare off. Okay. So um, you're not going to learn that way. All right. You got to you got to try these things out. And right. And then so so put put forth the you know good good faith effort here. So but maybe you're legitimately stuck and you have no idea. Okay. <laughs> Let's, uh, let's try this. All right. We, we talked about the, uh, the setup of the problem. Are there still any questions about what this problem is even asking in the first place? Because if we don't know what the problem is asking, we're not going to understand the answer that we give to it either. Okay. So if you've got any questions, don't, don't be shy. Just say, I still don't get what this problem is asking. So we, we, we are, we're all good with the problem then? Or are you guys shy? <laughs> sort of. Okay. All right. So who, who said sort of? I'm, I'm going to call you out a little bit. I said sort of. Okay. All right. So uh, did, did it make sense when we talked about the M&Ms and the scoops? Yes. Okay. So I, I mean, I understand that 20% of the entire population uh -huh. people like yeah. stand. Yes. And that you're randomly selecting eight uh -huh. people. Yeah. Totally get that. But then it's when you say, what is the probability that over 25% of, of my sample, that yeah. particular sample, like the dam, uh -huh. that's where it gets Okay. Delivered. All right. Okay. Um, so at the at the risk of making it more confusing, okay, let's just say people. I don't know. Let's say I I live. I was uh, I was. Like God, and I had a scoop, and I could scoop people out just like I did the M and M's, okay? And then, uh, and I'm throwing them up into a bucket, and I'm, I'm mixing them up. <laughs> this is ridiculous, okay? But, but we're saying 20% of the people like to dance, and then let's say I scoop out 80 of them, okay? So I've got a random mix of 80 people who like to dance. All right, not not necessarily 80 people who like to dance. Random mix of 80 80 Americans, and I have no idea. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna count. How many people? I'm gonna say, do you like to dance? Yes. No. Okay. So an, an account. And uh, how many people are gonna say yes that they like to dance out of the 80? Yeah. You know, I don't know. Okay. Maybe uh, maybe 15 people say they like to dance. 
Maybe 20 people say they like to dance, okay? Maybe more than that, maybe less than that, okay? When I, when I pick 80 random people. I'm asking what's the probability that 25%, okay? So 25% of 80 is actually 20. So I'm asking, I'm asking what's the probability that basically 20 or more people like to dance, okay? But, but it's easier to deal with percentages. So I'm asking what's the probability that 25% or more like to dance? So if I, if I go through and I count out and it turns out that only 20% like to dance, then, then, um, then it didn't happen. But, uh, but we're basically asking what's the probability that 25% or more like to dance? I, I don't know if that helps, I feel like. Okay, okay, that's okay. If we don't know how to solve it, if, if we understand what it's asking, we'll talk about how to solve it right here, okay? So we've got a sampling distribution, and we, we said if certain conditions are met, and we haven't talked about those yet, but p hat follows a normal distribution. So every time I take a random sample of 80 people and I calculate p hat, that p hat's gonna come from a normal distribution. Okay? And it's no different than saying IQ scores come from a normal distribution and I'm picking a random person with their IQ. Or what's the probability that their IQ is 120 or more? Okay? It's no different than that. Now it's saying I'm taking a random sample and I'm finding it's p hat. What's the probability that the p hat is 25% or more? What goes in the center here? 0. 0.2. 0. 0.2, great. This is our mean, 0. 0.2, and that comes straight from there. What's my standard deviation? 0. 0.45. 0. 0.45, okay, but let's <coughs> let's talk about how we get that. So our standard deviation is 0. 0.2 times 0. 0.8 divided by 80. Okay, so you punch this into your calculator. So 0. 0.8 is 1 minus 0. 0.2, if, uh, if you're wondering where that came from. Oh. Okay, so I get 0. 0.002 and the square root of this thing is 0.0447, okay? So I recommend, uh, if you're gonna round off or anything like that, keep uh, keep a few decimals there, okay? So uh, 0.0447, and so what do I do? I'm asking, what's the probability that over 25% of my sample likes to dance? So if I draw this, draw a normal curve, I would draw a line at where? 0.25, and I'm shading over here. Does this picture work perfectly? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so then what's the next thing I have to do? Normal model problem, what, what do I do next? Go to the chart. That, I can't go to the chart yet. I gotta figure out a certain score. Oh, yeah, Z score, right? Z score. So what's my Z score? How do I get that? 0.25 minus 0.20. 0.25 minus 0.20 divided by 0.0447. So what's my Z score? I get 1.12. to this question. What is the probability that over 25% of my sample likes to dance? About 13%, okay? Or 1314-ish. How is this? 
Good? We're okay? Yes? Whether you write percentage or uh, as a decimal, it's, it's the same to me, okay? Should we try another example or, or are we good with that? We do another one. Another one?
walking around. Uh, some of you guys totally got it. Okay, others, others of you, you're struggling a little bit. All right. So, uh, so this is uh, this is something you got to learn. And uh, if you're struggling, please uh, please study. You know, study these examples and, uh, and make sure you understand. Okay. So it says 35% of people own a cat. We're going to randomly select 50 people, and we know what's the probability that less than 30% of that sample own a cat. So I'm drawing a normal distribution. What number do I put in the middle here? 0.35. Not 35, but 0.35. And I got to uh, draw a cutoff line. Where am I drawing my cutoff line? At, at 0.30, okay. And am I shading to the left or to the right? To the left. To the left, because I'm asking for less than 30%. Okay, so I got to figure out my standard deviation. What's my standard deviation? 0.35. Yeah, 0.35 times 1 minus 0.35 divided by 50. And uh, 0 0.067. 0 0.067 something, okay. 67 what? Alright. And then what's my z score? So this is not the last step. I gotta figure out a z score. I do 0 0.30 minus 0.35, okay? So remember, you always subtract the mean, not the other way around. Divided by 0 0.0675. And I get negative 0.74, negative 0.741 or something like that. So then I go to the z table and I look up negative 0.74. And what's the number that it gives me? 0.2296. There you go. There's your answer. Yes? I just have a question because if you were just to not put the... Um, like for the standard deviation, if you did 0 0.067, that would change your answer. So how are you supposed to know how many decimal points to do? Because if you were to do it as just 0 0.067, then you're... Um, then you round up to 0.75. Um, yeah, to look it up, and then that would have so, changed your z-score. Uh, so I guess... My rule, uh, I don't know, I usually keep four decimals after the, uh, four, four places after the decimal. Um, but, uh, you know, what I like to do is I like to do everything in the calculator, and, and that way I'm not doing any kind of rounding at all, okay? So here I would do 0.35 times parentheses 1 minus 0.35 plus parentheses divided by 50. I hit the square root button, I hit the answer, and I get 0 0.06745 or something, okay? And then so in the next step, I would do 0 0.30 minus 0 0.35 divided by answer, because the answer right now in my calculator is the standard standard deviation. And I get negative 0.74125 or something, okay? All right, is this, uh, is this working? Yes. Okay. So uh, I think that's it for, um, we'll cover this type of example. The, um, it's one of our, con I guess, uh, caveats that we've got here when we're talking about a sampling distribution is that it says if certain conditions are met, okay? And so, uh, let's talk about these conditions, okay? And, uh, and the fact that it follows a normal distribution, this is known as the central limit theorem, okay? So this, uh, this concept here, this is also known as the central limit theorem. Which is the fact that when you look at uh, the sampling distribution, it follows the normal distribution. And that, uh, so this type of problem would be considered a central limit theorem problem.
All right, so let's talk about conditions to make sure we can use the central limit theorem. is regarding how we selected our sample. The sample that we select, all the individuals or whatever they are, they have to be independent or randomly selected. They have to be independent of each other or randomly selected. So this is known as the random slash independent condition. Did you guys talk about sampling methods? Simple random sample? Is this not familiar at all? Yeah. Maybe? Okay. So, so a lot of times in the in the problems, for, for us to be able to do any kind of apply our math concepts to our, our problems here, um, we will say a sample was selected randomly, or it was a simple random sample. The reality is pulling off a simple random sample is extremely difficult to do in real life, okay? Uh, if we want to randomly select uh, Americans, that means every single person or every single American needs to have the same probability of being selected. Now that's going to ma make it difficult because, um, you know, we don't have records of everyone. We've got, uh, there's homeless people and things like that. And if we want a truly representative sample, the, those people also need to have uh, an equal chance of being selected as anyone else like you or I. Okay. Um, so that's one of the conditions. Uh, just things to be uh, wary of, okay? If I were to send any of you on a homework assignment and I said, go and get a random sample of, of people, you would all fail, okay? You would not be able to select a random sample. Okay, so you, maybe you go to a street corner and you try to interview people. That's not going to work because that's not a random sample. Okay, because uh, only people who walk down that street are going to be the ones you encounter, and that doesn't represent even Los Angeles itself. Okay, um, if you interview your friends, that's certainly not going to represent Los Angeles. Okay, because your friends probably at least share certain interests or traits with, as you do. Um, so, those kinds of things don't work. Internet surveys are not random, okay? Maybe you go to ESPN and they ask, uh, you know, who do you think is going to win the West Conference Finals or something like that, okay? And they got Sports Nation and these surveys there. Those are not random surveys um, because, uh, yeah, because it only gets people who visit that website. And, uh, and there's, as far as I know, there's no website that every single human on Earth or even internet user visits, okay? Um, I mean, maybe Google has a, gets quite a bit of hits, but probably the people who work at Yahoo don't visit Google as much as other people do, okay? So, um, you know, internet surveys, not random. <coughs> Surveys of friends, not random. Um, even using the phone book, these are not random, okay? Because who here is listed in the phone book? All right, not very many of you. And if we use the phone book to generate our random sample, we're not going to get any of you. Okay, so anyway. Random and independent, but we're just, a lot of times when we read a problem, it's going to say such and such were randomly selected, and then just go with it, okay? You might, you might, your uh, critical detective mind might be like, how do we know it was randomly selected? Well, the, because the problem says so. But, um, <laughs> but in, um, you know, if you read a newspaper article or, you know, a magazine, something, and they talk about a survey, um, unless it was done by one of the big uh, 
big names in sam sampling, like Pew Research. Pew Research spends a lot of money trying to generate random samples. And, uh, and so those things are trustworthy. But whatever. Cosmo poll? OK, not a random <laughs> sample, all right? Um, so, uh, OK, the other one is we want to make sure our the population that we're dealing with is big, OK? So we've got a big population condition. And this states that the population needs to be at least 10 times bigger than our sample. So if my sample, if I select uh, a sample of 50 people, how many people need to be in the population, at least? 500. At least 500, OK? So if I'm taking a sample of 50 people, and my population only has 400 people, um, we, we can't use the central limit theorem, OK? Because the population is not big enough. And, uh, and the reason for this is uh, just imagine you know, having a deck of cards. Okay. The very first card you draw, what's the probability that it's red? 50%. Okay. There's 26 red cards, 26 black cards. Okay. Well, let's say I've taken out 10 cards now. Okay. And then I ask, what's the probability that the next card is red? You don't know because it depends what happened to these 10 cards. If these 10 cards, I've got nine red cards in my in my stack of 10. Okay, which is possible then certainly you don't have a 50% of selecting a red card on the next next draw. Okay? So, so if we take too much of the, uh, of the population, we mess things up. Okay? But when it's 52 cards and I've just drawn out one and I draw out the next one, it's not technically not 50% anymore. right? If, if I drew out one uh, red card, then I've got 25 red and 26 black cards. Okay? But we're going to say at this point it's close enough Okay, where you know just dealing with Less than one tenth of the population, it doesn't mess it up. But basically, you, you just want to make sure you're not sampling too much of your population. So, big population. Is, is that all right? Mm -hmm. And then we've got the large sample condition. So, the sample itself needs to be large. And uh, we check this by doing n times p has to be bigger than or equal to 10, and n times 1 minus p must also be bigger than or equal to 10. If either of those conditions fail, then the large sample condition doesn't work. And if any of these conditions fail, then you cannot use the normal distribution for your sampling, sampling distribution. Okay, so all of these conditions need to be met in order for us to use the central limit theorem, in order for us to be able to answer questions about uh, questions like this. Okay. Our sample condition. So if I say, um, if I said 35% of Americans own cats, and I select a sample of 50 people, is that large enough? Which is what the problem we did. So I said 35% of Americans own cats, and I'm selecting a random sample of 50 people. Were our conditions met? Yeah. Okay, so I said we randomly selected, so that, that was met. Big population is 50 people. Is, uh, is our population at least 10 times bigger than 50? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is our population in this case? 340 million. Yeah, OK. <laughs> our population is everybody in America, right? <laughs> so 300 something million, OK. Is it 340? I think it's a little bit. Close I think we, 300. Yeah, we just so. reached 300 million like a, a couple years ago. So still uh, hasn't taken off that much yet. OK. And then uh, for large sample, we check n times p. So n is 50. P is 35, 0.35. So we do 50 times 0.35, and whatever number that is, that's like 16 and a half. 
that's bigger than 10. And then we do n, which is 50 times 1 minus t, which is 0. 0.65, and that's like 32 and a half. Okay, so then um, or 33 and a half. I don't know something. Yeah, 32 and a half, and the other number is 17 and a half. Okay, so both of those conditions are met. All of our conditions are met. Yes, question. Wait, how do we know condition two is met? So what what is my uh, my sample is size 50, right? Yeah. Okay, what's the population that corresponds to that? Okay. Uh, all of America in this example, okay? So is there more than 10 times 50? Is there more than 500 uh, Americans total? Yes. 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 So we, for number three, we, um, we get the population times the proportion, 50 times 30, 0.35. Not the population, but the sample size. Same. N, 50. So here, I'll just do this. Uh, so to check this, for our last example, we did 50, n is 50 times p, which is 0.35, and I get 17.5. That's bigger than 10. And then the other one, I do 50 times 1 minus 0.35, so 65%, or 0.65, and I get 32.5. That's also bigger than 10. So that, that's met. Yeah. Do you need to do both or what one? You have to check both. Okay. You have to check both. But if I selected a sample size of 20, then we'd be in trouble, okay? Because 20 times 0.35 would give me 7. 7 is not bigger than 10. Okay. Let's, uh, let's take a little break there, and then uh, we'll come back in about 5 minutes, and we'll, we'll finish off uh, chapter 7.